Section 17.5, Factors that Affect Solubility. The solubility of a substance is affected by temperature as well as the presence of other solutes. The presence of an acid, for example, can have major influence on the solubility of a substance. In section 17.4, we considered the dissolving of ionic compounds in pure water. In this section, we'll examine three factors that affect solubility of ionic compounds. The presence of common ions, the pH of the solution, and the presence of complexing agents. We'll also examine the phenomenon of amphipterism, which is related to the effects of both pH and complexing agents. Common ion effect. The presence of either calcium or fluoride in the solution reduces the solubility of CaF2, shifting the solubility equilibrium to K, uh, CaF2 to the left. This reduction in solubility is another application of the common ion effect. In general, the solubility of a slightly soluble salt is decreased by the presence of a second soluble that furnishes a common ion. Figure 1715 shows how the solubility of calcium fluoride decreases as sodium fluoride is added to the solution. Sample exercise 1712 shows how the K sub SP can be used to calculate the solubility of a slightly soluble salt in the presence of a common ion. Figure 1715, common ion effect. The way in which sodium fluoride concentration affects the solubility of calcium fluoride demonstrates the common ion effect. Notice that the calcium fluoride solubility is not on a logarithmic scale. Solubility and pH. The pH of a solution will affect the solubility of any substance whose anion is basic. Consider the magnesium hydroxide, for example, for which the solubility equilibrium is. A saturated solution of magnesium hydroxide has a calculated pH of 10.52 and contains a concentration of magnesium ion of 1.7 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. Now suppose that solid magnesium hydroxide is equilibrated with a solution buffered at a slightly more acidic pH of 9. The pOH therefore is 5, so the hydroxide concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative 5. Inserting of this value for the concentration of hydroxide into the solubility product expression, we have the concentration of magnesium ion is 0.18 molar. Thus, magnesium hydroxide dissolves in the solution until the concentration of magnesium ion is 0.18 molar. It's apparent that magnesium hydroxide is quite soluble in the solution. If the concentration of hydroxide was reduced even further by making the solution more acidic, the magnesium concentration would, ha would have to increase to maintain the equilibrium condition. Thus, a sample of magnesium uh, hydroxide will dissolve completely if sufficient acid is added. Figure 1716. Dissolution of a precipitate in acid. A white precipitate of magnesium hydroxide in contact with its saturated solution is in, in the test tube on the left. The dropper poised above the solution surface contains hydrochloric acid. The anions accompanying the acid have been omitted to simplify the art. The solubility of almost any ionic compound is affected if the solution is made sufficiently acidic or basic. The effects are very noticeable, however, only when one or both ions involved are at least moderately acidic or basic. The metal hydroxides, such as magnesium hydroxide, are examples of compounds containing a strongly basic ion, the hydroxide ion. In general, if a compound contains a basic ion, that is an anion of a weak acid, its solubility will increase as the solution becomes more acidic. As we've seen, the solubility of magnesium hydroxide greatly increases as the, as the acidity of the solution increases. The solubility of calcium fluoride increases as the solution becomes more acidic too. Because the, the fluoride ion is a weak base, it's the conjugate acid of a weak acid. As a result, the solubility equilibrium of, of CaF2 is shifted to the right as the concentration of fluoride ions is reduced by protonation to form hydrofluoric acid. Thus, the solution process can be understood in terms of two consecutive reactions. The calcium fluoride breaking into calcium ion and fluoride ion, and the fluoride reacting with, with the proton to form hydrofluoric acid. 
The equation for the overall process is calcium fluoride breaks apart into calcium ion plus two acid ions. Figure 1718 shows how the solubility of calcium fluoride changes with pH. Other salts that contain basic ions, such as carbonate, phosphate, cyanide, or sulfide, behave similarly. These examples illustrate a general rule. The solubility of slightly soluble salts containing basic ions and anions increases as the concentration of, of uh, hydrogen ion increases, or as the pH is lowered. The more basic the anion, the more the solubility is influenced by pH. Salts with anions of negligible basicity, the anions of strong acids, are unaffected by pH changes. Formation of complex ions. A characteristic property of metal ions is their ability to act as Lewis acids or electron pair acceptors towards water molecules, which act as Lewis bases or electron pair donors. Lewis bases other than water can also interact with metal ions, particularly the transit, uh, transition metal ions. Such interactions can dramatically affect the solubility of a metal salt. Silver chloride, for example, which has a KSP of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 10, will dissolve in the presence of aqueous ammonia because silver ion interacts at, with the Lewis base ammonia, as shown in figure 1719. This process can be viewed as the sum of two reactions, the dissolutions of silver chloride and the Lewis acid base interaction between silver ion and ammonia. The presence of ammonia drives the reaction, the dissolution of, of silver chloride to the right as silver is consumed to form silver uh, ammoniide. For a Lewis base such as ammonia to increase the solubility of a metal salt, it must be able to interact more strongly with the metal ion than water does. The ammonia must displace solvating water molecules in order to form silver ammoniide. An assembly of the metal ion in the Lewis bases bonded to it, such as silver ammoniide, is called a complex ion. The stability of a complex ion in aqueous solution can be judged by the size of the equilibrium constant for its formation from the hydrated metal ion. For example, the equilibrium constant for formation of silver um, ammoniide is 1.7 times 10 to the 7. The equilibrium constant for this kind of reaction is called a formation constant. The formation constant of several complex ions are listed in Table 17.1. The general rule is that the solubility of metal salts increases in the presence of su suitable Lewis bases such as ammonia, cyanide, or hydroxide. If the metal forms a complex with the base, the ability of the metal ions to form complexes is an extremely important aspect in their chemistry. In chapter 24, we'll take a much closer look at the complex ions. In that chapter and others, we'll see the applications of complex ions to areas such as biochemistry, metallurgy, and photography. Amphoterism. Some metal oxides and hydroxides that are relatively insoluble in neutral water dissolve in strongly acidic and strongly basic solutions. These substances are soluble in strong acids and bases because they themselves are capable of behaving as either an acid or a bases. They are amphoteric oxides and hydroxides. Amphoteric oxides and hydroxides include those of aluminum, chromium, zinc, and tin. Notice that the term ampho amphoteric is applied to the behavior of insoluble oxides and hydroxides and can be made to dissolve either acidic or basic solutions. The similar term, amphiprotic, which we encountered in section 16.2, relates more generally to any molecule or ion that can either gain or lose a proton. Amphoteric species dissolve in acidic solutions because they contain basic anion. What makes amphoteric oxides and hydroxides special, though, is that they also dissolve in strongly basic solutions. This behavior results from the formation of complex ions, anions containing several, typically four, hydroxides bound to the metal ion. Amphoterism is also explained by the behavior of the water molecules that surround the metal ion that are bonded to it by Lewis acid base interactions. For example, aluminum a cation is more accurately represented as a complex ion of water and aluminum because six water molecules are bonded to the aluminum cation in aqueous solution. Recall from section 1611 that this hydrated ion is a weak acid. 
As a strong base is added, the aluminum loses protons in a stepwise fashion, eventually forming neutral and water-soluble aluminum, aluminum blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry, that escapes me. This solution then dissolves upon removal and addition protons uh, from, the an from the anion. This reaction is, occurs as follows. Removing additional protons is possible, but each successive reaction occurs less readily than the one before. As the charge on the ion becomes more negative, it becomes increasingly difficult to remove a positively charged proton. Addition of an acid reverses these reactions. The proton adds in a stepwise fashion to convert to the hydroxide groups to water, eventually reforming the hydride of aluminum. The common practice is to simplify the equations of these reactions by excluding the bounded water molecules. Thus, we usually write AlCl3 instead of the complex ion. Al aluminum hydroxide instead, and uh, aluminum tet tetroxide instead, and so forth. The extent to which the insoluble metal hydroxide reacts with either acid or base varies with the particular metal ion involved. Many metal hydroxides, such as calcium, iron, and iron hydroxide, are capable of dissolving in acidic solution, but not, do not react with XX base. These hydroxides are not amphoteric. The purification of aluminum ore in the manufacture of aluminum metal provides an interesting application to the property of amphoterism. As we've seen, aluminum hydroxide is amphoteric, whereas F, uh, iron hydroxide is not. Aluminum occurs in large quantities as ore bauxite, which is essentially Al2O3, with additional water molecules. The ore is contained within iron oxide as an impurity. When bauxite is added to the strongly basic solution, the aluminum oxide dissolves because the aluminum forms complex ions. The, hydroxide, uh, the iron hydroxide impurity, however, is not amphoteric and remains as a solid. The solution is filtered, getting rid of the iron impurity. Aluminum hydroxide is then precipitated by addition of an acid. The purified hydroxide receives further treatment and eventually yields aluminum metal.